Hello, my book hoes. Today we are doing yet another fun Halloween thing in my sewing room. And it's definitely not homework adjacent. Editing Bianca here, just wanting to say, why do I look like the berries and cream dude? Hello and welcome to Book Hoarding by Bianca. Sometimes I talk about books, but today I'm talking about costume things. Also, I'm Bianca. Hi, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share because please, it'd be nice if I got to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. I've been working really hard on all these Halloween DIYs and like, it'd just be sweet to know that someone enjoys the content that I put out into the world to show you all how to sew chaotically. Adam's family, just great, great content great movies, great all the things, right? And what is more iconic than Morticia's really cool skirt thing that she has going on that goes boop, boop. Those are technical terms, so you'll mark that down. I was thinking about her skirt actually when I was doing my latest patterning class assignment segment thing, which is all about skirts. And you know when you start talking about flair and stuff? You know what immediately comes to mind? That wonderful flair at the end of her skirt. And I got to thinking to myself, self, yes self, don't you have like um, a bunch of black fabric that would be great for this Morticia skirt? Yeah, I think I do. I mean like you, you got it for a different project, but like that's never gonna happen. No, it's not. So I could definitely use it for this skirt. That'd be great, right? I mean, yeah, because that means that you're using part of your stash. Oh, self, you're so smart. <laughs> yes, you are. So once I realized that I did have a bunch of black fabric in my stash that was going to be perfect for a Morticia skirt, I was like, yeah, let's do this. Let's make this thing because it A, will practice my skills for my class and B, it will like be a thing that I can teach you all how to do if I can make it happen. And I did. The bigger portion of this is going to be about making your own pattern. Because I'm aware that this is a very iconic skirt, but I also know as someone who's petite, but also curvy, that um, I have tried it on the skirt a million times at like Halloween stores, Hot Topic, all the places, and it never fits me right. Because either the hip portion fits me, and the bottom is just like too long on me, like doesn't hit me right. Or just there's a myriad of other problems, right? Like if it's the right height, it's usually not gonna like fit my waist. Theoretically, the skills I teach you today using flat patterning techniques could help you make your own. And the reason I didn't go over the sewing portions as much in detail is because this was more of a putting a pattern together versus a how to sew a skirt. I will also make sure to include linkage to other people who've sewn a Morticia skirt. I will also preface all of this with I will be working in half scale on my pattern that I'm going to show you because I don't want to do this on my floor making a full size skirt. What does half scale mean? It means it's literally half of a full size thing. I am using the half scale slopers that I would use in my class. Again, this might be secret studying for me because I do have a midterm coming up, but this is basically what a half size thing would look like. This is like a little half size dress form that I made using um, a bunch of scraps and things. And then these are my little clothes that I put on it. So it's half scale, it's half the size. For perspective, like you, you would do pretty much the same exact stuff, but in full scale. While you're here, A, admire my like spiderweb eyes. Mm, 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 mm. So cute, but also while you're here, don't forget to please check out the links in my profile just to support the work I do. It's like, you can leave me a tip on coffee and I'm also on Patreon if you want to support me monthly. I drop previews of my content and like other cool things behind the scenes, but it mostly just like helps me actually be able to have the bandwidth to make this content. Here's what you're going to need for the actual making this pattern. First and foremost, you will need a sloper that fits you. Now, if you don't know what a sloper is, I will link to the closet historian who does a ton of stuff on pattern drafting and pattern alterations, and all those things. There should be a thing specifically about skirts, if not multiple videos about skirts that I will make sure to link. And those are gonna go more into how to make one for yourself, how to draft one for yourself. In essence, a sloper is just like 
your basic shape. Some people make their slippers so it has the seam allowance, some people don't. Those are things that you should know and be aware of. So I'm just gonna operate under the assumption that you kind of have an idea of what a sloper is going into this. You're going to need some paper. If you're going to do this in full size, you are going to need measuring tape and measuring tools of various things um, from, I you know need measuring tape. I also have a ton of rulers, quilting rulers, French curves. All of those things are gonna be really helpful for altering a pattern. You're gonna need tape, just tape tape, pencils, pens, paper, scissors, and obviously if it's sewing part you'd want fabric scissors, but we're mostly focused on the papers today. And any other things that like help you if you make patterns, like if you need an awl or a notch or any of those things, get those out because this is going to be mainly a pattern altering video. And will it be life altering too? I hope so. Okay, are you ready to have fun with your spoopy season skirt? Let's make a Morticia skirt. Do it and subscribe. So you are going to start with your basic blocks. I am doing this in half scale so it's easier to follow. And you can do this in whatever scale you need to. This is just an example of how to go about this. Um, I'm just marking the center back in the back piece and the center front in the front piece here so I know what the pieces are, so you know what the pieces are. It's very exciting, but basically this is just half scale. You can do the same stuff to a full scale sloper that you have on hand or that you've drafted and make it work. I'm not gonna be giving exact measurements for this stuff because it really depends on you and your body and what you're looking to do. So this is the step that I would have said, make sure that right here, on the lower left edge, aka the outside edge, if you want to make this more of a hobble skirt, you will start bringing that in about an inch or two inches, depending on how much you want there, and then operate as usual um, and follow that line in until you want to flare out again. So here I'm just going to be adding the length because this um, ends around my knees um, in full scale. So I'm just going to be adding paper so that I can make something that's going to work as a half scale full length skirt. So I am working in half scale and so basically when I did that I was just making sure that I measured. You would do this in full scale too. You'd say where do I want this skirt to end um, versus where do I want the flare to start and the hobble to begin. Where do I want you know the widest part to be. You know measure yourself and your body because you are going to have different measurements than I will. Um, but I basically chose a length that was not going to be trailing on the floor because I still wanted this to be pretty wearable for me. Like on a kind of daily wear versus a one-time Halloween thing. So again, for that lower left, you would have just brought that in starting from that lower edge and then made that diagonal line until it intersected with the lowest line that we're seeing me cut out right here. Um, a reminder that I am using rotary cutters on a bunch of self-healing mats, so don't just cut into your table, friends. That's not fun at all. We now have a half scale that is lengthened to the desired length that I want. It's just simple enough to just use scotch tape to get that there. And the thing you need to remember too is after you've measured that, you're going to want to do the same thing for the back because if you want things to match, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta to work, right? But while I'm here, um, I'm just going to be checking out my seam lines and being good, good student. And I'm going to actually start getting those lines figured out. So Looking at this, it seems like I definitely want to make that center fold. Since that will be doubled, that seems like a good size. It's also usually like typically like the princess seam space. And then I'm going to be making my waistband. So for this, you're going to want to make sure I draw a straight line here. But you're going to actually want to curve it a little bit. Because you're going to want it to be the same length all the way down. So this little slash that I'm putting in is going to be your little notch so that you know where to line stuff up. So I've made those little notches 
and those are things that you would translate into a length, full length pattern too. But then I'm going to go right now and kind of curve this out a little bit more. You would use theoretically a French curve to do this in a much finer way. But if you don't have one, you know, these are easy things you could blend. You could make sure you measure from the top down however much you want. You know, just blend lines until you get a good curve going. So you can, you know, find, I think if you Google printable French curves, you can actually find free ones if you're looking for that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start moving some of my darts into a waistband yoke situation. So I'm going to cut that dart so it almost meets that line. Just so it almost meets. There's still like a thread of paper holding it together. And I've cut, you saw the side, the curved side. I brought it in. So now I've transferred the dirt to that waistband hole that you're seeing. And I'm going to do the same thing for this dart. I'm just cutting just enough. There's enough so it's basically creating a little tiny hinge. I'm moving it over. I'm just going to pop some tape on there. And then I'm going to continue on and finish out my waistband. Now... This is just one way to do this. Um, and you can see here that I totally did not make that first notch long enough because I didn't really think about that curve coming in and how, how steep that gets at the end because you want to make sure that that's the same length from the top down and not just straight across because we're working with curves here because our body is curved. So putting in my green line, remind myself it's the center and that's going to be cut on a fold. Little notes. These are your patterns. You can write whatever you need to. Um, top, bottom, you know, side, front, whatever you need. Now I've drawn this line and I can cut through. Now I've taken off the yoke. Once again, I'm like, fuck, I totally forgot to put in the notches until right now. But I'm going to put them in. Oh, and I forgot to tape that all the sides down. Listen, I'm not perfect, but I am showing you my process so that you understand the logic behind making this at least in half scale. I hope it's at least going to be a useful thing to see. So make sure you have your notches because that's really important. And then I marked where my knee is or about where my knee would be. Obviously my knee is not six inches or whatever long. Um, this is again, half scale pattern. So now I'm thinking about, okay, where do I want this flare to start? What are we doing? Again, these are things that you should measure on your own body and your own pattern where you'd want the flare to start. So with this, a reminder that the center on the front is on a fold. So you would not be making any flare go into that side. I'm going to draw these little things that will allow us to make a flare and to flare out into our iconic Morticia silhouette. So you, I basically just used the ruler to make these little lines, funky little lines of like kind of like very long house lines, right? Little, I mean, you're making a very tall apartment complex essentially on your skirt. And the tip of those is where I want my flare out to start for the Morticia dress. Um, so these vertical lines are going to help you build in a flare, little kick to that skirt. And that's the thing again, that you will measure where you want that to start. And that's where that tip should be. So now I'm going to start cutting to this. I started again, I'm leaving just a little bit of thread or not thread. It's paper. You know what I mean? Just a little tiny bit of paper attached to the top. Just a little bit. I need this to be able to move out and flare out because that's what I'm doing with this. Reminder that we will not be doing this to this center front seam. Drawing your neck so that you know. Do not put one there because you must cut it on a fold. So what are we going to do with these now? I'm just using construction paper. You would obviously use not construction paper because you need a bigger piece. I'm just going to um, tape this down while I'm working with it so you can see what I'm talking about. But you are just going to flare that out and it's 
from a roll of paper. So like that's when the paper keeps curling. Thank you, Ikea. But you're just going to flare that out the amount that you think it should be. And reminder that that flare will share a flared side with what we're seeing right here to its very left. So it doesn't need to be too massive if you don't want to be too massive because it is kind of half of the side of a flare. But you're just going to use this to make as dramatic of a kick out flare as you want for your Morticia skirt. You can see here with the construction paper, I'm just turning it over so it fits better um, side by side. You can also do this in full scale when you're putting it on, you know, your large scale pattern paper, whatever you're using for that. You know, you can use anything from newspapers, gift wrap, anything you got around the house. But this is just construction paper fits for these half scale things. So again, if you'd made the hobble skirt, you would have made that um, diagonal line all the way to the hem and then you would have just been doing the same thing. It just would have started more internally and in, inter I don't know, whatever. But you would just assess from that and look at that silhouette that you're making. Now I need to add a little bit of the seam allowance. So I'm doing this again in half scale and obviously too when you do this in full scale you would use your preferred seam allowance. Straight edges are fine. Those are not that, that hard to deal with but for your curved edges I like to just follow the straight edges that we do have laid out and put that fringe curve down to just curve that out and make it a nicer line. I'm gonna cut it out and so theoretically the those would be the cutting lines for your fabric. Um, you wouldn't cut into that big gap that we made when we cut that piece out for the flare. That would all be filled in with fabric. So don't you worry about that. I like to use the clear quilters ruler for this. It's just nicer, easier to see what you're working with underneath. So for this, this you do the same. And obviously there's an uneven amount of curve here. So you just do your best. And you do remember, you know, if you, if you wanted to make, let's say that this, you wanted to make a, um, a high low out of this you would need to factor that in as you go um and there are probably other videos that are better at teaching you how you would do the high high low so it's high higher hem in the front and lower in the back which you can totally do i just didn't for this because i wanted this to be kind of like a more wearable skirt situation nerdily enough this literally is just something that reinforced a bunch of stuff that i learned in class about like yokes and gores and waistlines and flare and all this stuff um because like a not golf version of this skirt is just like a basic tulip skirt you know i'm massively nerdy and was just like really excited about all the concepts i was learning and was like well fine like i could make like this iconic skirt that's kind of fun and wearable and also goes through my stash and um, I'm trying to do a bunch of stash busting this year, a bunch of it. I just have been gifted and accumulated a lot of stuff and it feels really fulfilling to work on all of this. Anyway, this is me saying um, I need to add seam allowance to all those things at some point and maybe I did off camera. But you do need to add seam allowance to all of your new lines that you've cut pretty much. Now you're not gonna add, you see how I made that flush against the bottom? That's cause that's the fold. You don't add seam allowance to the fold. You do need to add seam allowance though to the other pieces. So again, as I talked about before, the way that I do it is I kind of mark a couple of lines to make sure I get that even. Then I bring up my front curve, work my way around to make that an actual nicely curved line. Is it perfect? No. It's not. I've only been doing flat patterning for like seven weeks. Literally just seven weeks. I have a midterm next week. Am I terrified? Yes. Am I also excited? Hell yes. I'm going to share with you all of the things that I learned that I think could be useful for the projects I'm doing if you want to do them yourself because um, sharing is caring. Teamwork makes the dream work and I don't feel like knowledge should be hidden behind too many barriers for people. If I'm being honest, it's just how I feel. So yeah, just drawing out the new seam allowances for things. I started with a sloper that did not have seam allowance for my half scale. I started with a sloper that did not have seam allowance built into it. If you did start with a sloper that has seam allowance built into it, you need to note that everywhere. 
when I uh, make this in full scale, which I just have a time lapse of because it's essentially the same stuff, except for me constantly reminding myself that my full scale sloper does have seam allowance built into it. So I'm constantly having to mark which side has seam allowance and which side does not have it yet. Those are things that you just need to know if you're making your own patterns because it's just really helpful. And it saves you a lot of crying later. Well, some people don't put seam allowance into their slopers. I personally kind of like the idea of just, if, if I'm gonna use this base pattern a ton, um, having it there. Anyway, and I put the notches in so that like, you know, you can mark them easily later. And then we move on to the back of the skirt. We're gonna do pretty much the same thing. We're gonna measure out. And again, this is half scale. Like yours might look different for your body. Um, and I will link to some videos on how to put slopers and everything together. I've already added the length here. I'm adding notches. Um, check out the Closet Historian if you have not. If you are looking into more info for pattern drafting, for slopers, any of the stuff, um, that's who you should be looking at. She's a professional, has a very, very extensive knowledge of this. Again, you would, if you were making a hobble skirt, um, you would have brought that in a little bit, but this time on the far right corner of that half scale. So the hobble is just where it starts bringing itself back in after like, usually it's like the height of the hip curve, the, the farthest starts coming in. So it kind of just hugs you. Think about the material you're using. Think about all those other little things, your comfort level, all very important in making these. Because you could have a little bit more of an extreme curve, I think, if you have stretchy fabric. You still want to be able to walk. Anyway, so I've done exactly what I did at the front, which was I put in those notches. It's two notches on back. That's how you indicate the back of clothing. It's two notches. And then I've shifted those darts and that fullness. I've done some dart manipulation to make that yoke. And now it is gone. And we shall... Do what we did before which is we're going to work on building out flare and gores and to remind myself how far i measured down i'm literally just going to measure that other piece that's how that's how that works if you've made everything even you would be making the same choices on both sides because that waistband needs to be the same size as the front um, the same height, I guess. And then that flare, I mean everything, but that flare needs to start at the same place um, to line up to the flare coming from the front. Notches, again, two notches means it's the back. And now it is time to cut down that seam line. And then we're going to bring stuff out. We're gonna make our little flare, flare houses again. I'm just gonna call them flare houses. It's a flare house. Anyway. So I went in and I measured. Now I'm like, oh yes, this is what I did. This is how high I made them. Even on half scale, you want to make sure like they match. If you're making half scale patterns and stuff. Like you still want to make sure they match. But yeah, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just measuring up to where that flare is gonna start on my gourd skirt. And the center back does not need to be on a fold. So you know what that means? Center back can get a flare. The very back. So if you make this a high-low, that could easily be your lowest point. And it could have a lot of body, and you could put a lot of train back here because... Yeah. Center back. You gotta put it in a zipper. So that's gotta be... Cannot be on a fold. Same thing I did before. I'm cutting into the paper so there's just a little tiny bit of paper left at the tippy tuppy of the little paper house that we're building. And I'm going to flare it out to desired flare. Again, you can make these as extreme as you want. You could have it flared almost completely horizontal if you really want that. If you're dealing with a heavier material or lighter material, that might dictate how extreme your flares are. Lots of factors. Lots of ways to customize this into being exactly what you want. You know? 
So we're doing the exact same thing for the back as we did for the front. And like you could also like measure. Okay, what do I want? How how a how much fabric do I have? And B, how far do I want this flare to go? That's an option too. So again, you're just gonna take this, you'd probably be doing this on a bigger piece of paper, depending on what you use for patterning at home, but it's the same thing. You're just gonna flare it out to where you want, and then you're going to add some welds. And a reminder that the center back on like the center front, you add seam allowance too, because you need to cut on that line, unless you're using some knit that is stretchy enough to go over everything. You need to add seam allowance. Cool. And now, through the magic of camera, I am going to quickly cut out my uh, own skirt slopers and be doing my own math. You can see me measuring, taking some notes, a notebook beside me, then I'm adding in those flares. I'm using extra pattern paper, using my French curve, bringing stuff in, doing it. Yes, my floor is messy. Yes, I do have bunny slippers. Aren't they adorable? I think they're cute. Anyway, this is how you make a full-size skirt. I mean, this is how I do, because the floor is the only place with this much space. Okay, and then now I'm in my Halloween socks, and I'm cutting out my full pattern. And I'm trying to remind myself of which side is which. How am I doing this? Um, I'm using this, like, really nice fabric I got from Fabrics, which is closer to me. It's a fabric store in San Francisco. You never know what you're gonna get. And it is amazing. They had, like, silks for, like, $5.99 and $7.99 at one point, like, months ago. <sighs> it was just dangerous, but it was really nice. Okay, and then you see me going full troll. Floor troll, is it? I prefer, like, floor, like, druid, you know? Just having some fun on the floor, building things. Being at one with the fabric. You will not hear any sound here because I notoriously listen to audiobooks while I sew and they are typically A. copyrighted and B. not safe for work. They are 90% of the time smarmy romance novels. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I shamelessly listen to romance novels while I do this. Anyway, this comes together pretty easily. I start with the gores, and though I did put notches in my fabric, the fabric is kind of slippery, and I decided to match up the beginning of that flare and pin out from there, and then sewed it down, just so that that flare could be lined up for all the pieces and start the same place. And then after you pin it the whole way down, it should be even. Only had a couple of pieces that had a little bit of like too much of the top or too much of the bottom. So yeah, I'm just sewing down. I will say that I decided to bring mine in as I discussed earlier in the half scale. I talked about bringing in the skirt for a more hobble skirt look and that is what I eventually did. Didn't do it in half scale but I talked about it so it still counts. And then here I am, full floor druid as we've now decided to call it floor paladin i don't know putting together the main big pieces which are now just the front to the sides um i still haven't put it on the yoke but i'll be doing that in just a second just have to line it up but this is where i'm doing it and again i'm starting down at the kick out the flare because that really needs to line up for the front and the back too it's very important so then I'll just be sewing that down, then I'll be prepping myself for the closure. I will say I will probably replace the zipper that I put on this because I think it's kind of shit. I am now putting together that waistband, getting that top done, then I'll make it be inside out, then I will attach the skirts to it. And then just hem the skirts into the back and that's it. It's a pretty easy build. I literally sewed this on one day. I think cutting it took most of an afternoon evening and I think the actual sewing of it took very little time. Maybe three hours off and on. It was just like very slippery fabric so I had to make sure I kept pressing and pinning and 
practicing with it to make sure it matched up with stuff. And, um, I'm about to put in my zipper. You know what happened? You know what happened? I ran out of thread in my bobbin. So I, I, I wound two new bobbins to literally do this last piece. I need to do on here which was the zipper but it's okay it's fine whatever that just means that I have an extra bunch of black thread for another project which I'm sure we'll need it so I've got two pretty full bobbins of black thread and that's not a bad place to be in and then we're done we've got a skirt huzzah I hope this made sense, and I hope it was useful. Armed with this knowledge, you should go forth and make your Morticia skirts that fit you. Because again, like for me, the biggest thing was these are kind of finicky with fit if they're pre-made because if your proportions aren't exactly what the person is, is making it for, then that flare at the bottom is just going to hit you all wrong. And uh, hopefully this helps with that. And a reminder too that like I did eventually take mine in to go in to make that flare more dramatic and to make my hips more shaped out. You don't have to do that. Both options are there. It's more walkable I feel like if you don't make that as extreme. Like you can definitely bring it in a little bit. I went on a hike in mine because I only brought in a notch to hug my body but not to constrict movement that much. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be doing the splits in the skirt, but like, I'm not going to be doing the splits outside the skirt either. Anyway, this was really fun for me. Like, genuinely, this took like a lot of my brain power to put together, but like, I really enjoyed making it because I actually really love my fashion glasses. <laughs> um, if you haven't been following, I basically, you know, in the midst of like all of like the panini midlife millennial crises, I decided to um, start taking fashion classes because like I've always wanted to and never got to and I've been loving them and they're super fun and I love sharing the things I learn with y'all. So thanks for being here and I hope that my um, coming tutorials will also be helpful around just how to hack a pattern basically and make it something cool and potentially cosplay related. Okay, so that being said, thanks for coming by. Please let me know if you make this skirt. Please let me know what you are going to be wearing for Halloween since that's honestly not that far away at this point. And if you haven't started sewing your Halloween costume, maybe we should get on that. Maybe we should all remind ourselves to uh, get on that Halloween sewing train. Anyway, special shout out to my patrons. Um, Lizzie Bennett here and above, get a special shout out in my videos like right now, but all patrons get access to a special Discord server called the Jane Austen Avocado Toast Society, which, you know, Discord didn't go down in that social media outage. So I'm just saying, maybe you should sign up for my Patreon because even at the lowest tier, you get access to it. Thank you for joining me and special hi for Frank's parents who are gonna be watching and also make it so. Berries and cream, berries and cream, I'm a little lad who likes berries.